it's, this, this isn't really about Rod's professional life so much, <laughs> but that's how I knew him. My name is Anne Percival. I started working for Rod in 1981. The first time I met him was a couple of years before that. Yeah, I don't know. The first time I met Rod was a couple of years before 1981 uh, at an OAA dinner. He sat next to me and was expounding at length about CEF, his beloved study of educational facilities for the Metro Toronto School Board, and I was simulating interest. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known him as I do now, I would have just said, my God, you're boring. <laughs> and he would have immediately agreed that that was very true and guffawed delightedly. He had a wonderful sense of humor, very black, very politically incorrect, irreverent and delightfully warped. There was no sentence he couldn't complete with, as the actress said to the bishop, <laughs> or vice versa. For those of us who spent a lot of time with, Rod, with, with him, Rod's crude humor is so deeply ingrained in us now, we have to be very careful around people with delicate sensibilities. <laughs> After we joined IBI, I gave him a cartoon from the New Yorker which read, we have no mandatory retirement age, Rod, uh, but under certain circ conditions, we tend to encourage people to die. <laughs> he loved it. It was impossible to offend him with humor, and although in retrospect, I suppose it could have been construed as somewhat insensitive, Rod really had a capacity for enjoyment. He laughed through everything. During the Sky Dome competition, he developed a facial tick, and the area around his eye would blow up from the tremendous stress. But despite the potential for cataclysmic failure, he managed to keep his sense of humor. We went through some very lean times in the 80s, but I can still hear Rod and Arun busting a gut in the meeting room. I recently read Peter Dickinson's biography. I was struck by some of the similarities, not just their noses. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like Peter Dickinson on his deathbed, Rod was still designing almost to the last minute. He was always thinking and plotting and scheming. He wouldn't admit it, but he either absorbed a lot of, what, of that from working with Dickinson, or more, more likely working with Dickinson just reinforced Rod's natural tendencies. Like Dickinson, he was incredibly competitive. He outlasted Dickinson and his friend Colin Vaughn by a long shot, but I think he would have been happier to outlast Jack Diamond. <laughs> I hope he's not here today. <laughs> he was the fairest of employers. With a, life, with a wife like Enid and three strong-minded daughters, we female employees never had to worry about gender bias. It just didn't exist at Robbie Architects. I don't mean to imply that Rod wasn't aware of gender. He was acutely aware. <laughs> and on at least one occasion, we were pretty sure he hired a woman purely based on the size of her breast. <laughs> remember who that was? <laughs> Latterly, he was very fond of the attractive young women who brought him lunch almost every day at the Queen Mother. The dream never died. <laughs> Rod never wanted to retire. He wanted to die slumped over his drafting board. He almost made it, except we got rid of all the drafting boards. He came to work almost every day up to about a month before he died, and they died the smart way, quickly. I always think of Romp and Ronnie's expression, a legend in his own mind, in connection with Rod, but he was so convincing that he left the rest of us thinking it too. And now, and now over to Karen Hall.